I know my Alabama fans aren't going to like this news, but I'm asking you to look at it from this perspective. Caleb Downs has got to do what's best for him, and this is what's best for him. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hope all of you having a great Thursday. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. We got an update on Caleb Downs. No introduction needed. You know who Caleb Downs is. He's the talk of the town, the number one player in the transfer portal, and he just left Alabama. We've already talked all about that. As an Alabama fan myself, yeah, it stings, yeah, it hurts, but no bad blood here. I'm wishing him the best of luck. I greatly appreciate everything he did for the University of Alabama, and it was a joy watching him, and it's going to be a joy watching him play elsewhere as well. However, with that being said, I do understand some of my other Alabama fans. You don't feel the same way about him leaving, and I get it. And I hate to make the situation worse for all my Alabama fans out there, but if you weren't happy with him leaving... You're most definitely not going to be happy with where he's about to wind up next. A little foreshadowing, a little foreshadowing. We're going to talk all about that, but also, we got to talk about this crazy situation going on involving Arizona. And I didn't think anything about it until some of you guys on Twitter were telling me, Yo, Matt, it's kind of funny and ironic how all these social media companies, they're always reporting on whenever an Alabama player leaves, but all these Arizona players are leaving and it's crickets. Nobody's saying a word. You are not prepared for what I'm about to say next. Arizona lost nine players, not in one day not in 8 to 16 hours, in 30 minutes. And as ridiculous as it is, it's even more ridiculous. Nobody's reporting on it, so we're going to do that. And also in today's video, and this is one of the most interesting videos we've ever made in a while, we got former Texas A&M players warning future recruits about going to A&M. If you like drama in college football, you found yourself in the right place because this video, that's all it is. I hope you guys are excited to get into this video as I am, but all right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now that for that, don't. Let's get into it. All right, first things first. So let's start off with this Texas A&M news involving the former number one recruit in the nation and also Evan Stewart. I'm going to give you a quick refresher and some more context to the situation. A couple weeks ago, Evan Stewart, the wide receiver, number one wide receiver in the nation, former five-star recruit, he leaves A&M and he goes elsewhere. No big deal, though, because we thought it was going to leave, but here's where things get fishy. Out of thin air, Evan Stewart started posting about how the medical staff, they did him wrong, and just be careful if you go to A&M because they do some shady things. So let's just get that out there right now. That happened a couple weeks ago, and we already talked all about it. Well, yesterday, another former five-star recruit, Walter Nolan, who left A&M, he did the same thing. He posted this on his Instagram story. PSA, if you go into A&M, read your contract thoroughly. Hit me up if you got questions you're just trying to help. So a few weeks ago, you got Stuart talking about how the medical staff is shady, and now you got Nolan talking about, hey, hit me up if you need help with your contract or whatnot. Just read it carefully. And on the grand scheme of things, I personally don't think it's that big of a deal, but you can't deny the fact that it's a little odd. I don't know too much about that situation. If you know anything more on it, please fill us in in the comment section. I'd love to know. We got to get a move on, though, to our second topic, and it involves no other than a surprisingly really great team this year, Arizona. This was one of my favorite teams to cover all year long. Noah Fafita, that dude was going off. And I just remember picking all their games every single week, and they were always an underdog, and I picked them to win, and they did win. I even wound up picking them to beat Oklahoma, and they did that as well. What a year it was for Arizona. What a year. Unfortunately, and this is the bad part about college football, when you do have a great year and you're not a big-time program just quite yet, that more times than not means your head coach is going to leave, and that's what happened. The butterfly effect is crazy. Arizona lost its head coach because of Nick Saban retired. Think about it. If Saban doesn't retire, then Kalen DeBoer doesn't leave Washington, and if Kalen DeBoer doesn't leave Washington, then Jed Fish doesn't leave Arizona. You see what I'm saying? So continuing along with that butterfly effect, if Saban doesn't retire, then Arizona wouldn't have lost nine players in 30 minutes. Yeah, that's right. You heard me correctly, and you see it right here. Nine players, 30 minutes. Can't make it up. Among the nine players that entered in 30 minutes was their star running back, Jonah Coleman, who had over 1,000 yards. And you see it in the comment section, you got all these Bama fans saying, hey, I want all the names just like Bama. Hold on, hold on, hold on. As when I'm speaking and making this video, just got some breaking news. Arizona's cornerback, Davis, who was the highest graded cornerback in the Pac-12, he just entered the portal. All right, yeah, so Arizona is pretty much falling apart at this point. And here's what I'm thinking with all this right now. I wonder how many of those, I guess now, 10 guys are going to follow Jed Fish to Washington. Because I remember when Jed Fish, he announced he's leaving. All these Arizona fans, they were mad because he only talked to the team for three minutes, which, by the way, I spoke about that. I didn't like that either. For those of you who don't know, when Jed Fish told the Arizona team he's leaving, he only talked to them in a team meeting for three minutes. Every time I view a situation or talk about a situation, I view it from both sides. 
at the end of the day, college football is a business, and if you don't understand why or how it's a business, I can't help you out. That's a different conversation for a different day. I don't have time to explain it. And a part of business, sometimes in this life, whether we like it or not, is being cutthroat. And yeah, it's more than safe to say, talking to your team for three minutes before you leave, that's cutthroat. That's the definition of it. Me personally, this is just me. I feel like he should talk to the team at bare minimum 30 minutes, more so of 45 minutes to an hour. I haven't even thought about this up until now. Maybe he couldn't have done that without breaking down. Maybe it was that hard to say goodbye. I don't know. I'm not in Jed Fish's shoes. Everybody handles situations differently. The point is, though, and the reason I bring that up, is Arizona fans, they weren't happy with him leaving. They were saying he's this terrible person, and none of these players at Arizona, they're going to follow him to Washington. And well, 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 here we are. You got all these players entering the portal, so... I wonder what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm asking y'all, do you think these players are going to follow him to Washington or are they going to go elsewhere? I don't know much about Jed Fish outside of what I've seen on TV. He seems like a pretty cool dude. I thought his players liked him this year. I thought they got along great and I thought they had a lot of fun. Arizona's got a predicament on their hands, so we'll see what happens there. But we are going to move on to the main topic of the main encore. The main reason you quit talking to this video, what in the world is going on with Caleb Downs? I said this the past two times. I've talked about Caleb Downs ever since Saban retired. I think he should go to Georgia. I stated this before he entered the portal. It's the best option for him. And here's what it came down to for him, and I think this was his entire thought process. He wanted to stick it out at Alabama. He loved Nick Saban, loved everything about Bama, but it didn't make any sense. Caleb Downs is a defensive back. Y'all know this, but a lot of people don't know that Nick Saban, he specializes in defensive backs. And that's why ever since Saban has got to Alabama, they've been DBU. It's not a coincidence all these great defensive backs come to Alabama. It's because of Saban. So right then and there alone, the main reason he came to Alabama, that's already gone. Well, to go on top of that, it's not just like Alabama lost the head coach. They lost the entire coaching staff. Alabama has now brought in South Alabama's head coach who went 22-16 and and Buffalo's head coach who went, what was it, 13-24, and something like that. Those are guys that Caleb Downs aren't too familiar with and you don't know how it's going to work out. And this was also a big part too. Got those in here. T-Rob, one of the assistants on the defensive side of the ball, he leaves Alabama and goes to Georgia. The Alabama that Downs committed to and signed to, it's no longer the same Alabama. It's a completely different team. And according to the newest and newest reports, so we finally got a crystal ball, and that is to no other than Georgia. I know my Alabama fans aren't going to like this news, but I'm asking you to look at it from this perspective. Caleb Downs has got to do what's best for him, and this is what's best for him. Look at what Georgia can provide to Caleb Downs. It's amazing. Defensive minded head coach, T Rob's there, great defensive staff, and oh yeah, outstanding team where there's no question marks. I'm not saying Alabama is going to be bad next year, it's just you don't know what to expect. Let me ask you a question Do you think Caleb Downs is going to get developed more at Alabama next year or Georgia? I don't think it's close. Georgia. And you can bet your best bet you're going to hear an announcement soon because take a look at this. This is from Steve Wiltfong, very reliable source. Talking to Gary Downs, the father of Alabama safety, Caleb Downs right now, and he said his son should officially be in the portal in the very near future and then he can start talking to and hosting other coaches. Wants to try and make a decision within 48 hours. And that was yesterday. You will be hearing an announcement fairly soon and I think it's going to be Georgia. It is worth being noted and thrown in there that Ohio State and Ryan Day, they're going down to Georgia as to when I'm speaking and making this video to have an in-home visit with them. Me personally, I don't think it's going to be enough to convince them to go to Ohio State just because Georgia can offer way more. And it doesn't even make sense to go up to Ohio State because what can they provide Caleb Downs that Georgia can't? Nothing. I'm not saying you shouldn't hear them out because you should definitely weigh your options, but there's no reason to go to Ohio State. And if you think you should go there, please let me know in the comment section, what does Ohio State do that is better in Georgia? Let me show you all this though. Here's what Nick Saban has to say about Caleb Downs, quote unquote. I think what impresses me most about Caleb Downs is his maturity. He's a very instinctive football player, but this guy, there's no arrogance about him. Being one of the best players in the country at his position, he's very focused, he's very coachable. He wants to know everything that you can ever tell him about how he can play his position better. He takes coaching well when you talk to him about what he did or didn't do. That right there is some of the highest of highest praises you're ever going to hear about a young man and a young athlete. If a coach ever says that player is coachable, that is the best word you'll ever hear. I'm telling you. And for that reason alone, that is why Caleb Downs will be not just a great college football player, he already is, but he's going to be a great NFL player. To be as good as he is and not have an ego or have any cockiness to him whatsoever, it's rare. He possesses two great characteristic traits, and there's many more, but these two are what's going to make him an NFL legend. 
He wants to work hard, and he also wants to learn. A lot of people in this life, they don't want to learn because they think they know it all, when in reality, they don't. And Caleb Downs is already elite, but he is still humble enough to sit back and say, you know what? I need to find out what I did wrong here. I need to get better. I have room to improve. I'll show it to you once again. He has been crystal balled to Georgia by these guys, and they're pretty good at what they do. The crystal balls are normally right, I'd say, 90, 95% of the time. I've been telling y'all if he were to leave Alabama, I expect him to go to Georgia, so there's my crystal ball on that. Whenever it's official, we'll report on the news. You already know that, but for now, let me know your thoughts down below. But, uh, Robert!